everyone! My name is Haley, and welcome to the iGEM Breaking Down Synthetic Biology Crash Course. Today we will be talking about how to use Benchling to simulate a restriction enzyme digest. The first step is to create an account with Benchling, which is free to use. If you don't have one, pause the video and click on the link to set one up. Now that you have an account set up, let's get started! Before we dive into Benchling, let's quickly recap the science behind restriction enzyme digests. Restriction enzymes are proteins that cut DNA with specificity. Each restriction enzyme looks for a specific sequence of base pairs in DNA, which is known as the recognition site. For our exercise today, we will demonstrate how restriction enzymes can be used to isolate or cut a gene from a plasmid, a circular piece of double-stranded DNA. Since plasmid DNA is double-stranded, the restriction enzyme nicks the top and bottom strand of DNA. This results in the formation of a sticky end, or a blunt end. In order to isolate our gene of interest, we need to identify a restriction enzyme that will cut specifically at the beginning of our gene and one that will cut at the end of our gene. The plasmid we will be working with is called PCDF1B TTAGO. This plasmid contains a gene that codes for argonaut protein TTAGO. We are going to use Benchling to identify and use restriction enzymes to isolate the TTAGO gene from the plasmid. Here is an image of the plasmid we are going to work with. As you can see, the TTAGO gene, or our gene of interest, is annotated in purple. Benchling automatically annotates any FASTA or GenBank file upon upload, which is shown through the colorful labels. From looking at our plasmid, it is clear that we will need at least two restriction enzymes to cut out our gene completely, on this side of the gene, and another on the opposite side of the gene. Now that we have taken a good look at our plasmid as a whole, let's open it up on Benchling. To open this plasmid on Benchling, download the FASTA file linked below. After downloading it, open up Benchling and find the plus icon on the left side of the screen, which says create when your mouse hovers over it. Then select DNA sequence, and under that select import DNA sequence. Then drag and drop the downloaded FASTA file into the gray dashed box, or select the file from your hard drive. After the sequence is done uploading, Click on Open Sequence, which is underlined in blue. Now you should be able to see your plasmid on Benchling. So at the bottom left, there are two values. One is labeled Bases, and the other is labeled Insert. The Bases value tells you the total number of base pairs, or nucleotides, in your uploaded DNA sequence. The Insert value tells you the base pair position of your cursor on the DNA sequence. If you click and move your cursor around the plasmid, it shows you the start and end base pairs of the highlighted sequence or portion, along with its length and melting temperature. The melting temperature is helpful for primer design, which is discussed in a separate video. For our objective today, we will focus more on the start, end, and length displays. Towards the top of the screen, there are four subtabs: Sequence Map, Plasmid, Linear Map, and description. The sequence map shows you the base pairs associated with each gene or annotation. The plasmid tab shows you the circular representation of the DNA sequence. The linear map provides you a linear view instead of a circular one of the DNA sequence. And the description tab serves as a digital notebook where you can take notes. Go ahead and click on the sequence map subtab. Earlier, you may have noticed these vertical gray lines on the sequence map in plasmid subtab. These gray vertical lines represent the different restriction sites, which Benchling automatically annotates for you when you upload your DNA sequence. Now let's go ahead and scroll to the beginning of our TTAGO gene on the sequence map. At the beginning of the purple band that represents our gene, there is a restriction site for the enzyme KPN1. If you click on the enzyme, you will see a dark black line and a blue highlighted section. The black line represents how the DNA will be cut, and the blue highlighted section shows the recognition sequence or site for that restriction enzyme. As you can see from the dark black line, KPN1 forms a four base pair overhang, or a sticky end. Now, let's find a restriction site towards the end of our TTAGO gene. There are two restriction sites, ECOR1 and NOT1. Let's go ahead and use NOT1. If you click on NOT1, you can see where it cuts and the target sequence. NOT1 leaves a four base pair overhang, creating a sticky end. You may notice the sudden appearance of other enzymes highlighted in green. 
These are enzymes that produce the same four base pair overhang as not one, but have different recognition sequences. Now that we picked our enzymes, it's time to run a digest. To run a digest, click on the scissor icon on the right hand panel. Under New Digests, scroll down to the Find Enzyme search box. First, we are going to type in KPN1 and we are going to click on it. Then, let's type in NOT1 and click on that. Notice how each restriction enzyme is assigned a color that will help you identify the restriction site location on the sequence map. Notice when you put a cursor on the enzyme name, there is a panel on the left that shows between which base pairs the enzyme cuts. It also provides you the incubation and inactivation temperature of your enzyme, depending on your providers, such as NEB, Thermo Fisher, and Promega, which are all companies you can order restriction enzymes from. After entering your two enzymes, scroll to the bottom and hit Run Digest. Then click on the tab labeled Virtual Digest. And there you go! Let's talk about how to read the results. After conducting a restriction enzyme digest, you end up with a fragmented plasmid. However, from these fragments, you want to isolate the fragment containing your gene of interest. So, how do you do that? Well, in order to separate the desired fragment from the rest of the plasmid, scientists use gel electrophoresis, also referred to as an agarose gel. The basic idea is DNA has an overall negative charge. If these negatively charged DNA fragments are loaded onto a porous gel that is charged with an electric current, then the DNA fragments will begin to migrate through the gel towards the positively charged end. The heavier or longer fragments will not travel as far, and the lighter or shorter fragments will travel farther. This results in the separation of the fragments based on size. If we know the size of our desired fragment, we can identify it or isolate it and extract it from the gel via something called a gel extraction. What you see is an agarose gel with a ladder. The ladder provides a reference as to where fragments of certain lengths will be located on the gel. In column one, you will see where the expected fragments from the virtual digest we just ran will be located. As you can see, there are two bands present which correspond to the two fragments produced by our restriction digest. So, how do we know which band contains our gene of interest? Intuitively, if we look at the map of our plasmid, we know that our gene takes up less than 50% of the plasmid and is, therefore, the smaller fragment. Since we know smaller fragments travel further in the gel, we know our gene must be the bottommost fragment, which is between 2 to 3 kb or kilobases. If this method works, you won't always have just two fragments. Some enzymes may have multiple cut sites throughout your plasmid, which can result in more than two bands. The foolproof way to check is as follows. If you click on the band and open up the plasmid subtab, you will see what portion of the plasmid that band represents. If that portion contains your gene, you know that band represents your gene fragment. The next step is to look at the bottom left of your screen at the length value. According to Benchling, our gene fragment is 2,069 base pairs long, which is a little over 2 kilobytes. When looking for your band on the actual gel, this number will be useful as you can look for the 2KB mark on the ladder and identify your gene fragment on your gel. If you look at the Benchling gel, you will see that the band we identified as our gene fragment via intuition is in fact just slightly over 2KB, which checks out since its length is 2069 BP long. Congratulations! You have successfully completed your first virtual digest. To learn more about agarose gels, Check out the video linked above.